gentlemen. Um, I just want to let you know that I, I personally, my own opinion personally, believe that this video has a little bit of power to it. Now, I just did this video, but while I was in the middle of doing the video, somebody called. I answered the phone. They're going through a foreclosure situation, and I answered the phone. Then I come back to finish the video, and the whole screen froze up because I got to this point right here. Now, it was giving me some problems. ChatGP was giving me the back and forth stupidity, so I put the video on pause, and then I put this prompt in here. Pay attention. And this was the original prompt. And I did several prompts after that, and then I went back to the original prompt and clarified it. I received the following documents, a deed of trust and a promissory, well, uh, a so-called negotiable note. For Mr. Cooper, could you please find any evidence in these documents, which document that the note contains exceptions, transfer abilities, and assign abilities, Assign of, um, assignment clauses or any indication of possible negotiability. You are to provide a response with, it's supposed to be with specificity. No nuances, no clarification. Do not input your, it's supposed to be input your opinions. Uh, you are to stick within the context of the questions asked and no other response are you to provide in, is that understood? Analyze the document, inspect and look for duties and or transferability and or assignability or any indication of possible negotiability with any other party. Keep in mind that a promissory note cannot be evidenced by an order to pay or ambiguities. A promissory note is unconditional and must be unambiguous. Uniform Commercial Code, Article 9, Section 102, Subsection 65, a negotiable instrument may have language respecting transferability or assignability. It may even have an order to pay our rep, anyway, to the order statement. Uh, but according to the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 3, Section 104E, uh-oh, I didn't even finish it. I didn't even know until now. I mean, it answered the question correctly. So let me give you guys the answer. Hold on. I have reviewed the documents you provided. Here is the analysis for each document based on your request. Analysis of the note file, 00099246 score score note dot PDF. One, transferability. The document contains language indicating that the note is transferable. Specifically, it mentions that the note may be transferred to other parties. This is typically found in the section where it states, I understand that the lender may transfer this note. Two, assignment clauses. The note includes assignment clauses, which indicate that the note can be assigned to another party. This is often found in the phrase, this note or an interest in this note, together with the security instrument, may be sold one or more times without prior notice to borrower. Three, negotiability. There are indications of negotiability in the note. The presence of phrases such as, pay to the order of, suggests that the note is intended to be a negotiable instrument. This aligns with the definition of a negotiable instrument under the Uniform Commercial Code Article 3, Section 104E. Analysis of the Deed of Trust, <laughs> file 00099546.pdf. One, duties. The Deed of Trust outlines the duties of the borrower, including making timely payments and maintaining the property. Specific language detailing these duties is found throughout the document particularly in sections detailing borrower responsibilities. Two, transferability. The document mentions that the deed of trust itself is transferable. This can be seen in sections where it states that the lender or beneficiary may transfer the deed of trust to another party, often without prior notice to the borrower. Three, assignment clauses. The deed of trust contains assignment clauses, which allow the lender to assign their interest in the property and the deed of trust to another party. Language indicating this is typically found in sections stating that the deed of trust may be sold one or more times without prior notice to borrower. Summary. 
Both documents contain clauses that indicate the notes transferability, assignment, and negotiability. Transferability. The note may be transferred to other parties. Assignment clauses. Both the note and the deed of trust contain language allowing for assignment to other parties. Negotiability. The note contains language such as pay to the order of, indicating it is intended to be a negotiable instrument. These elements support the conclusion that the note is not a simple promissory note, but rather a negotiable instrument under the Uniform Commercial Code, which aligns with your argument for the motion to overturn the summary judgment based on the improper classification of the note. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. If you need gentlemen. any further analysis or have additional questions. Oh, shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, I got something I'm about to do. Hold on, and then I'll bring you guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just completed two videos talking about how I came up with this idea, and it is an idea, where I took someone's promissory note and their deed of trust. I put the PDFs in ChatGPT by uploading it to ChatGPT. Sorry. Give me one second. Sorry. Had to go and check the phone. I thought it was ringing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the idea is this. Just so that you guys get it, this video will not be long. It will not be going over the whole document. I'll be explaining to you what the document is. Taking the person's deed of trust, taking their so-called note. If the note carries transfer note language, if it carries assignment language, if it carries a order, those are known as exceptions. Those are known as negotiable instrument language. Go and look at the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 3, Section 104, E, specifically E. You can look at the other ones, but if it contains any of that language, it's a draft. A promissory note is only a promissory note if it's a simple contract. This conversation, you guys will get a copy of this conversation. This conversation is not dealing with a simple contract. It's dealing with a complex contract. Why? Because your contract says all kind of stuff. It's more than five pages long. That junk is extremely long. Got all kind of do's and don'ts and ifs and buts and what's and it's and what's he say. So guess what? As long as it has that language, it's a negotiable instrument. You cannot foreclose on a negotiable instrument. A negotiable instrument is not proof of an outstanding debt. A promissory note is. A negotiable instrument is not proof of an outstanding debt. So guess what? He put together two motions for y'all, two of them. And we're not using any, pay attention, uh, case laws, I mean, coast law, I mean, that stupid junk. See, we're doing a petition overturn summary judgment. Any of you who've had a summary judgment, this is your petition to overturn the summary judgment, bringing up the facts. Remember, it's new discovered evidence because you're just now knowing that yours is not a simple contract it's a complicated contract so there's your petition to overcome and here's the historical background and all that all you gotta do is fill it in all you gotta do is add whatever you want to each section it's in an outline lord have mercy and then pay attention gives you the federal reserve act gives you the national banking relief act then it gives you the uniform commercial code then it gives you the maxims of law and it puts that in here maxim Okay, he who affirms must approve. I mean, must prove. They come in with a stupid promissory note. They have to prove that that note is still a promissory note and not a draft. That's why you challenge their jurisdiction. Now they have no choice but to prove. You don't have to prove they don't have jurisdiction. Once you challenge their jurisdiction, the burden falls on them. Challenge the jurisdiction of the other party. All right? Then we go on down here. Watch that. See, petition relief requested. You want to request for affirmative relief. Just trust me on affirmative. Then summarization. You're going to summarize the entire case. Okay? Recognize that the note as a draft requiring the lender to prove the alleged debt. The petitioner also demands a trial by jury and seeks compensation and punitive damages. You put the amount that you're seeking. Three times the value of the property plus more. By the way, you got both motions, ladies and gentlemen. Stop worrying. Stop. I got to go talk to an attorney. Let's see what that attorney has to say. What the are you worried about what a stupid liar has to say? That's what the word attorney means. It means liar. Remember, they get to lie to you. I don't get to lie to you. My God doesn't allow me to lie to you. Okay? 
I'm not joking. He does not permit me to lie to you. I have to suffer consequences I do that. I don't like consequences, people. I've already suffered too many of them, so I choose not to suffer consequences no more. Good consequences? Yeah, but they're not really consequences if they're good, are they? You figure it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, three videos all to show you guys this. Now, again, this was done for you, not for me. You're going to get the whole conversation. You're going to get the whole conversation. Listen to the whole conversation, ladies and gentlemen. Quiet title claim and demand for a trial by jury. This is for you guys. Do your quiet title claim. They're, claim. They're trying to foreclose on you. Sue them in quiet title. Don't let them get away with stupidity. Got to go, y'all. Under five minutes. Don't say I ain't did it for you.